Hello, uh, PSI 2000 students. Um, this is uh, an introductory video to week one, Canada as one country, uh, of our course. Um, in this week, you will be focusing mainly on the key concepts that um, you need to understand in politics and political science. And uh, we will also be looking at some readings related to the founding uh, concepts or ideas of the Canadian Federation, uh, which is background for understanding the other weeks in the course. But this week, I think it's very important that you spend time thinking clearly on, on some of the most critical concepts that are standard to all forms of political science and the study of politics or government for that matter. And those uh, start with, you know, what is politics? What do we mean by politics? And uh, you need to have an understanding of, of what what is politics from the point of view of of its uh, its intellectual basis of, as an area of study, and what is it that it looks at, and the um, <clears throat> the key concepts that follow from that are the are the are the substance of of political science, which are uh, politics is essentially the study of 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 power and how that is used in government um, uh, over time, and uh, you know the tools that that are involved. Uh, you also have to understand that that a lot of what is in political science concepts is a debate about how to to define those concepts, and that debate is very much uh, emanating from different ideological perspectives on on the subject matter. For example, when we talk about politics, you will find traditional political scientists will will view politics as primarily a matter of government. Um, and the, and the study of government and how parties or, or members of parliament or congress or prime ministers or presidents are elected and that is the scope of politics for them but there's a whole group of political scientists that emanate more from the um, from the uh, Marxist tradition or for that matter from uh, from uh, traditional conservative perspectives um, that look at politics more broadly from the point of view of um, politics is about a system of control which is more than just government it can it's also corporations in the legal umbrella that they operate under and so on and how that influences people in all aspects of their life so the very concept of politics itself is is something that is reflected or is impacted by ideological factors so you have to understand those those aspects of of how politics is defined and why it was defined differently uh, by different schools of thought in political science and uh, i've just given you a couple of examples but in the readings you'll begin to see uh, more of those um, those distinctions um, other key concepts that you'll be looking at are, are the concept of power. What is power? Um, and how does politics study it? Um, uh, power is the ability to influence the actions of others or to exert your will in a, in a system of, of relationships. Um, and, uh, but there are different forms of power. There's course of power. There's, there's, uh, there's legitimate power. There's power that people voluntarily comply with or power that, that needs to be reinforced by coercion. And you will see in, in both my lecture notes, which are posted in uh, week one on Blackboard, but also in the readings themselves, there are different ways to think about uh, what power means and uh, what is effective as opposed to ineffective power over the medium to long term. Um, influence. The concept of influence is very important to politics because if you don't want a completely coercive based form of power, you have to have uh, a legitimate influence. Uh, and that is comes from things like experts. Uh, well, he's the prime minister, therefore, or a uh, member of parliament or, or some uh, recognized authority that gives a legitimate uh, influence over a situation. Um, then, as I mentioned, you'll learn about the concepts of coercion as opposed as opposed to consent. Uh, you know, power that re relies on coercion as opposed to voluntary consent, um, and that that those are important concepts because they define, in many ways, uh, the difference between um, legitimate regimes, like in our liberal democratic government, as opposed to repressive regimes where coercion needs to be exerted to a much greater degree than we have to here. Uh, I mean, the police generally in Canada don't have to go around banging heads to have people comply uh, with uh, the majority of our laws. And uh, that 
speaks to issues of influence, speaks to issues of voluntary consent. Um, and and also it speaks to the issue of legitimacy. I mean, we view our government as legitimate. If you have people rioting in the streets and, and there's protests and calling for the heads of the prime minister or whatever, then obviously you have a situation where you're, you have a, de a decline in legitimacy of the government, which makes governing therefore much more reliant on coercion and much more reliant on, on inefficient ways of governing because coercion is expensive both in political terms and in financial terms, and in human terms, obviously. Um, so you'll deal with things like what is what is the legitimacy, what is authority. If you have a legitimate authority that passes a law, 99% of the people will comply. Uh, if you have an illegitimate authority that relies on coercion, what is going to be the result? You can figure that out. Uh, it's common sense. Um, you'll also look at concepts related to state and government. What, what is the difference between the two uh, in, in political science literature? Some make it synonymous. A state is government. A government is state. But um, most political scientists would view the state and government in, in different levels of, uh, as different levels of analysis. Um, because, uh, you know, a state of affairs or a state of a government would include everything from all the way down to municipal level. It would include uh, things like uh, corporate power and, and the laws that the government sanctions that they can operate under. Those are all areas of power, areas of influence, and potentially areas of coercion. Um, so uh, you have to understand the different distinctions that political scientists make between state and government. Um, then we talk about issues related to your readings. We'll talk about issues related to democracy and totalitarianism. And what are the characteristics of a democratic state as opposed to the, the characteristics of a totalitarian state? And, uh, of course, there are many different kinds of democratic states, as just as there are many different kinds of totalitarian states. But um, at the end of the day, uh, there, there are substantial differences that we can discern a democratic state from a totalitarian state. And um, it's important for you to understand those, uh, those distinctions. Um, then there's the concepts of a nation and country. Um, many people you'll see in the press and things like that will, will denote uh, nation and country as being the same thing. Uh, but in reality, political scientists will have generally a more sophisticated view of that, and they will realize that more than one nation can operate within and can coexist and be the member of the same country. Um, we see that in Switzerland. We certainly see that in Canada. Uh, but, um, uh, but a lot of what has become... Um, uh, uh, political science expression or concepts has been formed by by countries that didn't have the same concepts of uh, multiple nations under one country. Um, the U.S. multi um, melting pot kind of a of a uh, of an outlook has uh, shaped a lot of this political science language. That there's in the United States there's one nation, you're, you're American, there's one country, it's the United States of America. Uh, whereas in Canada, I think if you did a survey, you would find that there would, that people would view at least two nations and, and potentially uh, three with the Aboriginal peoples uh, living, um, living under one, uh, one roof in one country. So you have to understand the use of the concepts of nation and country and how in different uh, jurisdictions, that language will will vary quite considerably. Like in Japan, there is, there is no multiple nations. There's the Japanese and the Japanese government and the the country of Japan. Whereas in uh, in Switzerland, there would be uh, the Germans, the Italians, the French, uh, and the Dutch, or or whatever the case may be. And in that case, and and they would all live in one uh, peacefully under one country. Um, nationalism, you'll also uh, look at the, what the concept of nationalism is and how that relates to the concepts of nation and country and uh, the concept of identity. I mean, uh, in politics, how you, sh how you form your political identity is really, really important for understanding political behavior. And so you'll need to understand the concept of identity uh, from the point of view of both national identity, but also ideological identity. And, uh, and that explains a lot about how to look at, at politics. Then uh, the other aspect of your reading is just looking at Canada in its formative, its formative years. What were the major founding ideas of Canada as a country? And it's important for us to, before we launch into understanding Canada's political landscape or navigating Canada's political landscape, you need to understand 
what its root uh, what its root ideas were because those root ideas uh, endure to one degree or another to today. Um, they still influence our thinking, whether we know it or not. They're still influential factors. For example, like the two founding nations of Canada. It's still a very prevalent concept in what uh, you see in the media and what you, you see, how people think and so on. Even if, in reality, uh, we're now a much more diverse country. Um, and uh, in the two founding nations, if you were to fly in from outer space and look at Canada now, they would say, well, I mean, I mean you've got so many immigrants. It's such a, mo a mosaic of people. Um, how can you say two founding nations? Well, yes, that's true. But that wasn't the case in 1867. And uh, yet those concepts still persist against the reality of the new Canada. And it, it explains a lot. Those, those founding concepts continue to be important. So we need to understand what those are. So be careful to, you know, to make sure that this, this week is really important from the point of view of you know, getting a good understanding of what the core concepts of politics and political science are. And those are listed in your, uh, my lecture notes for uh, week one. Then go through your readings and, and uh, let's uh, you know, and look at the concepts. Make sure you think them through. Like, you know, what is your understanding of politics? Where do you come down on the concept? Is it just government or is politics a larger issue as, as would be talked about in terms from political economy, for example, which would look at an, an entire power structure of a state and how that influences how people live and function within that state. Um, and, and the different aspects of power, coercive power, influential power, power based on legitimacy, power based not based on legitimacy and reliant on coercion. You can see how all these tools, these conceptual tools are critical uh, to the political scientist who really is about studying how power is exercised in society. Um, and so that's, uh, that's a very uh, important aspect of politics. So uh, get into your readings, and if you have questions and you don't understand some things, um, send me uh, generic questions, and if I respond to generic questions, I'll typically email my response to um, the entire class. If you email me about things that are more, you know, sort of uh, um, uh, your individual perspective or you have an individual uh, difficulty understanding a concept or something, I'll respond to you directly. Okay, so enjoy the first week's readings. I think you'll find them uh, quite interesting informative and um, we'll uh, talk to you again uh, very soon uh, with um, uh, a video for the second week of the course.